Hey there, this is Mr. Mason Ed, and what we're going to do in this tutorial today is we're going to write an expression to represent the perimeter and the area of two different rectangles. Now notice with this rectangle, the length and the width of the rectangle are given as algebraic expressions. So we cannot actually figure out the perimeter and the area of the rectangle. All we can do is write an equation or an expression that would represent the area and the perimeter of the specific rectangle. Well, we know that this width right here is n to the fourth, and opposite sides of rectangles are equal in length. So this edge is also n to the fourth, and this edge here of the rectangle is 2n to the third power. So the length of this side is also 2n to the third power. Now, to find the perimeter of any rectangle, we have to add all four of their sides. So we're going to go ahead and add 2n to the third power plus 2n to the third power plus n to the fourth plus n to the fourth. Now in this expression, we have one, two, three, four terms. Now what we're going to do with some of those terms is combine them. You can combine terms if they have the same variable and they have the same exponent. Because these two terms are both n to the third terms, we can combine these two together and because these two terms are n to the fourth powers, we can combine those two together. So we could say we have two groups of n to the third and two more groups of n to the third. So altogether, we have four groups of n to the third. And right here, we have one group of n to the fourth. And here, we have one more group of n to the fourth. So altogether, we have two groups of n to the fourth. Now, these two groups cannot be combined because they are not like terms because they have a different exponent. So this is actually as far as we can go. This expression right here represents the perimeter of this rectangle. All right, let's go ahead and check to make sure that this expression is in fact the correct one to represent the perimeter of our rectangle. What we can do is choose any value we want at random to represent the value of n and plug it in for all of these n's and solve and then plug that same value in for these two n's and solve. So I'm just going to say that n is equal to 2. That's not true, but you can pick anything that you want to just to check for equivalence. So we're going to plug 2 in for this n. So we're going to write that as 2 to the fourth power, and 2 to the fourth power is equal to 16. So if I plug 2 in for that n and do 2 to the fourth power, that is also going to be 16. Now over here for 2n to the third, we're going to substitute n with 2. And we're going to do 2 to the third power first because we have to do exponents first. 2 to the third power is 8. So we have 2 times 8, which is 16. Which means this value over here, if we plug 2 in for n, is also going to be 16. Now if we were to add 16 up all four times, that would give us a total of 64. Now we should understand that each one of these sides is not 16. All we're doing is checking for equivalence and that's it. So let's plug a 2 in for this n and see if we get 16 as well. So we're going to write 4 times 2 to the third power plus 2 times 2 to the fourth power. Now 2 to the third power is 8, so this term is going to be 4 times 8 plus 2 to the fourth power is 16, so this is going to be 2 times 16. And here we have 4 times 8, which is 32. And here we have 2 times 16, which is also 32, which gives us a total of 64. So we would say that this expression here is, in fact, the correct one to represent the perimeter of this rectangle. All right, now we have to come up with an expression that would represent the area of this rectangle. Now, to find the area of any rectangle, we just multiply that rectangle's length by its width. And in this case, the length is 2n to the third power, and the width of the rectangle is n to the fourth power. So we have to multiply these together. Okay, now right here we have 2n to the third, and we would say that the coefficient of this variable is 2, and the coefficient of this variable n right here is 1. Remember, if there is no number in front of a variable, 
its coefficient is 1. Now what we do in this case is we take the two coefficients and we multiply them together. 2 times 1 is equal to 2. And when you multiply variables, what you do is you take the exponents of those variables and you add them together. So we would say n to the third times n to the fourth is n to the seventh. And this is the expression that represents the area of this rectangle. Now another way we could have done this problem is we could have written all of this in expanded form. So instead of 2n to the third power, we could have written 2 times n times n times n. And then for n to the fourth, we could continue by just writing n times n times n times n. Remember, n to the fourth power just means you're multiplying n by itself four times. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And n to the third means you're multiplying it by itself three times. And of course, we're multiplying 2 by all of those n's. So really, we can take this and write it in exponential form. So we're going to write 2n to the seventh power because you can clearly see here we are multiplying n by itself seven times. All right, let's check to make sure that 2n to the seventh power is the correct expression to represent the area of this rectangle by randomly choosing a value for n and substituting and solving and doing the same thing for this expression. So we're just going to use n equals 2 once again. So if n equals 2, this side would be 2 times 2 to the third power, and this would be 2 to the fourth power. And 2 to the fourth power is 16. And right here we have 2 to the third power, which is 8, and 8 times 2 is 16 as well. So we have 16 times 16. So we're going to go ahead over here and multiply those two values together, and I believe the product is 256. So we have 6 times 16, which is 96, and we have 1 times 16 on the bottom. And if we add that together, we do in fact get 256. Now, if we substitute 2n for this n and solve, and we come up with 256, then we can confirm our results. So we're going to do 2 times 2 to the 7th power, and 2 to the 7th power is 128. So we're going to rewrite this as 2 times 128. And 2 times 128 is equal to 256, which confirms that this expression is the correct one. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. All right, once again, let's write an expression to represent the perimeter of this rectangle. Now, this edge right here is 2p to the third power, and this edge is also 2p to the third power. And this side is p to the second power, as is this side. So to find the perimeter of this object, really all we have to do is double this and add it to double this. So let's start by taking two groups of 2p to the third and add that to two groups of p to the second power. Now we should notice that I set this up differently than the last problem. With the last problem, instead of saying 2 times 2p to the third power, I wrote 2p to the third plus 2p to the third, which is really the same thing as just doubling something. So if we had two groups of 2p to the third, that would give us 4p to the third. So all we would do in this case is take this 2 and multiply it by the coefficient. Now over here, just writing a 2 in front of p to the second power, notice there's nothing else we can actually do here or multiply. So we're just going to leave that as 2p to the second power. Because if we had p to the second power plus p to the second power, those are like terms. And when you combine like terms, you do not change the variable or the exponent. All you do is add the coefficients of each one of those terms. And because this has a coefficient of 1, as does this, that would be 2p to the second power. So this expression right here represents the perimeter of this rectangle. All right, let's go ahead and write the expression to represent the area of this rectangle. All right, so the length of this rectangle is p to the second power, and we have to multiply that by the width, which is 2 times p to the 
third power. All right, so let's start by taking the coefficients of each one of these and multiplying them together. We have one times two, which is two. And then we have to multiply p to the second times p to the third, which is p to the fifth. Remember, when you are multiplying variables that are the same variable, you just take the exponents of those variables and add them together. So this right here is the expression to represent the area of this rectangle, and that's all there is to it. Hey, I just want to say thanks very much for checking out my math video. Please subscribe to my channel so when I upload new math videos, you can become informed as they become available.